Hi, Kyle Harris. Today, instead of doing an actual baseball drill, we're gonna show you some drills where you can learn to control your pelvis. Having pelvic control is extremely important in all aspects of life. And some of these exercises aren't just gonna help you with your performance on a baseball field with throwing and hitting. They're gonna help you with athletic control and all movements. And they're actually gonna be some great things that you can do throughout your entire life to mitigate back pain or back problems. About two thirds of adults in the United States suffer from back problems. So doing some of these exercises can help to strengthen the muscles and create better posture so we can eliminate or reduce back pain. So what we're gonna talk about first is basically we're gonna start at a very regressed state and move up through exercises on how to perform a standing pelvic tilt. So ideally what we wanna be able to do with our athletes is have them in a good athletic position and then we wanna be able to take our hips and roll them forward this way. So basically we're taking our hips and I like to say, think about your hips being basically an elliptical shaped apparatus here. And we're trying to tilt them like that. So I'll have them hold their hips at the top of the hips. So what happens is when we're hitting, we want to keep that position as we're hitting because that helps us create space. By creating space, what we mean is we're not going to run out of room over the plate. So if this is my bat, we've got the plate pitchers coming from that way. If we get arched up into what's called an anterior pelvic tilt, you'll see we start to run out of room. Our back comes straight this way and we get spinny. I like to call it spinny. People on base, you call it a gate swing. It's where everything's moving at one time. So you'll get jammed or things that are inside will feel like they're further inside than they really are. We're not gonna be able to hit that pitch. Also what happens is we get out, our bat gets into the hitting zone and then we roll right out of it very quickly it causes for a lot of balls that we roll over, flares to the right side, weak ground balls, hitting the ball off the end of the bat. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're controlling our pelvis this way. And then as we go to that ball here, we've got space. So if we're getting jammed up, we actually have better control on where our barrel is. When we get the barrel working in a vertical plane, we can actually stay through the ball, through the middle of the field, better. But to do that, we have to have pelvic control. A lot of times we see kids swing, first move they do is they come here this way. And then a lot of times you'll have coaches tell a child they're stepping out. And the only reason they're stepping out is because they don't have any space over the plate. So the hips come, we lose our hips, we step out to create path for the ball. So it's a lot of times it's not stepping out. A lot of times it's a pelvic issue. So we want to make sure we're controlling the pelvis that's gonna give us space to work through the ball. Now there's a lot of different exercises and drills that we can do, but we're gonna focus on things you can do right in your home to eliminate this by controlling our pelvis this way. Bad, we're coming here and we're trying to rotate or we'll step out or we'll lose our balance away from the plate. Good, pelvic tilt, controlling and turning in. So we're going to show you some exercises you can do to strengthen the muscles so the hips don't come towards the plate, they stay back, and then extension of the hip or belt buckle happens at contact up and over the pitcher's head. To do that, we have to have strength and stability within the muscles of our intrinsic core and around our hips, our pelvis, and our glutes. So we're going to show you some exercises to do that. First exercise we're going to do is a regression. We're going to do a lying pelvic tilt, and as you'll see here, there's a little arch there in the low back. We're trying to eliminate that. So I'm gonna come real close and pan in. Bear with my skills. I like to stick my hand right under there and I'll have them press my hand down or I'll put a wrist weight or a towel under there and they have to press the low back into the ground as hard as they can. Hold it for two seconds and relax. And while doing that, they have to fight to keep their glutes on the ground. Again, push it down, hold it. We'll hold it for two seconds and then relax. And I'll go through with a PVC stick or if, I, if it's my own daughter, I'll poke them in the belly. Should be rock hard when they're doing that. Now, a progression of that is to hold that pelvic tilt and then to march in place. One leg up, one leg down, and we wanna keep that low back on the ground the whole time. When doing this, you wanna make sure the movement is at the hips. This is just making it more of a dynamic exercise. We're trying to progress out from 
a very, very static pelvic tilt to a pelvic tilt where we're moving. Before we move on, I'm gonna show you a further regression from that because sometimes we have kids that they literally cannot understand or know how to feel that, that space and close it down. Okay, so you can see that space I was talking about and we've gotta close it down. So what I'll have them do is a single leg lowering exercise. So when you lay in this position, it naturally gets flat. It's hard to arch up here. So we make sure they're nice and flat. And then we lower one leg at a time, nice and slow, making sure it stays on the ground and then lift it back up. Lower it nice and slow, lift it back up. A progression of this exercise to make it more difficult when they've mastered that is to go both legs at the same time, trying to hold on to that pelvic tilt as long as possible and then back up. Once they go down and lose that pelvic tilt, we know that's where there's a discrepancy in mobility or strength. After we do the lying pelvic tilt and they've mastered that, they've moved on to marches, what we'll do is we'll get in a quadruped position, which is down on all fours, basically like a baby. And we're gonna try to do that same pelvic tilt in this position. Make sure they're not doing through the shoulder blades. We want that movement to be right through the pelvis. So we'll start up here. And we're trying to control that pelvic tilt. They can check themselves by poking their stomach. It should be rock hard. From that position, if they get that down, then we'll go to a kneeling pelvic tilt. We'll get into a basic athletic position, but on our knees. We hold the pelvis again so they feel this motion is what we're looking for, tilting. And then we're gonna to try to pelvic tilt only using our pelvis for movement. You'll see him wanna do this. This is bad. If they're doing this, you need to regress it back to the quadruped or you need to regress it back to lying down on their back. So we're here. Just like that. So the next progression is gonna be on your feet. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna use something to add a third piece of stability into the ground. So instead of being on two feet, trying to control our pelvis, we're gonna add a third piece of stabilization. Uh, it can be a PVC stick or a bat. So you can stand here and allow them to use it to brace themselves. Or if you don't have anything like that, you can use a table or a high, a chair that's very high in that same position, stabilize, get nice and tight. Try to pelvic tilt doing that. Then what we want to do, eventually we want to be able to progress to where we're just crossing our arms, crossing a PVC stick or a bat, and pelvic tilting from that position. Once they can do that, then we can start to add some skill specific movement. So we'll get into our stance, pelvic tilt and hold it. And then we'll start to kind of work through some turns. And we don't want them to turn as fast as they can because if they're losing their hips, the first thing that's gonna happen is they're gonna lose their hips and they're gonna end up spinning. And that's what we're trying to get away from. So we're trying to pelvic tilt, hold and turn through. Pelvic tilt, hold and turn through. From there, we can stick the stick right into the ground by our back foot. Same thing, pelvic tilt, and we can just kind of turn. Pelvic tilt and turn. This is a great one. A lot of kids can do this one. A lot of kids have success feeling the pelvic tilt and then the rotation. Pelvic tilt and rotation. If they're doing it wrong, you'll see them come this way. If they do that, we actually have a fix for that. If you have kids doing the PVC stick, pelvic tilt, rotate, and they're losing their hips, a great way to do that is to get them against the wall. And what we do is stand against the wall. We stole this from Chad Longworth. Thank you, Chad. Put the butt on the wall, pelvic tilt, put the butt on the wall, and then we'll get set. And then we'll turn and the butt has to stay into the wall the whole time. Get my cameraman to move out front. So we're into the wall, pelvic tilt, maintain the wall. And then you can see that. If I lose my hips, I'm out this way and I'm rotating here. So I'm pelvic tilt. And then I hold the wall. Let's go behind so you can see it from the back side. Again, the wrong way would be to arch up. Hips move towards the plate and we rotate. Not good. You want to be in that athletic position. 
pelvic tilt, hold the butt on the wall, and then rotate. What we've done next is we've got some pelvic stability. All right, we're able to control that. We're progressing out. This is one that will help us to aid in holding that pelvic tilt and feeling resistance in our pelvic turn. So we're gonna have some J bands or any kind of bands to provide resistance away from us. So that's, this is pulling us back towards the catcher. Pitcher would be over here. We're gonna stick it down, walk it out, use that stick in the ground, always cue pelvic tilt first, and then we're gonna rotate. And this is really nice because it keeps me from wanting to move my shoulders. I'm letting the resistance push me back from my upper body basically. Here, and it allows me to pull my front shoulder in, pelvic tilt, and turn. So those are some things that you guys can do. A lot of those exercises you can do at home. Even if you don't have a PVC stick, you can do it with a bat. You can do the same thing with the J-band. If you have a bat, you just put it through, hold it like this. If you don't have a bat, what you could do is you could take a bat, or if you don't have J-bands, you could take your bat, have somebody wrap a towel around it, hold onto the towel between your hands here, and they could resist because you're not swinging, you're not going to hit them, and they can provide you with that resistance. So. In the time now where we can't get out, parks are closed, training facilities are closed, this is a really good time to start working on pelvic tilt. Once you get that pelvic control um, with the line pelvic tilt, progress it out to the marches, so forth, all the way out. And um, next time you get to go practice or swing, if you have better pelvic control, you're gonna be extremely successful as compared to before. You're not gonna lose space and uh, you're actually gonna protect your back. So parents, do these with your kids. Make your back strong so you don't have people, so you're not one of those two-thirds of the people in the United States that suffer from back pain.